Hello everyone, and welcome back to DD Academy. My name is Robert Gonzalez, and today we're gonna to be going over workflows and the many, many ways they can help automate your marketing efforts and make your job a whole lot easier. Let's get started. Before we dive in, let's talk about workflows and concept. Workflows are best used to automate tasks that might normally be done manually and involve a lot of tedious, repetitive actions. This can range from assigning contact properties, to sending internal emails, to full email drip sequences to help nurture your leads. And all of this can be triggered by user interaction. Let's take a look. To get to the Workflows tool, simply click Workflows in the main navigation. If you do not see it, it's probably located under the Automation tab. Once there, you'll find a full list of workflows with some basic information, organized from most recently edited to last. Up top, you'll find a set of filters, including View, which allows you to filter by workflow state and some types, Creative By, which allows you to filter by a use-specific user who created a set of workflows, and Type. You also have the option to export workflows to do a more in-depth report. Workflows can also be organized into folders. To create a folder, simply click Create Folder up top and give it a name. To move a workflow into a folder, simply select that workflow, click Move to Folder, and select the appropriate folder. You'll also find a button to restore workflows that have been deleted in the last 90 days, and a button to create a new workflow. After clicking Create Workflow, you'll notice that there is an option to use a template for your workflow, but we are going to start from scratch. The first step in creating a workflow is to decide on the enrollment criteria. The enrollment options are very similar to active list creation, which includes common filters like specific contact properties, list memberships, form submissions, and more. After determining your enrollment criteria, you need to set your workflow actions. This can include things like sending an email, changing a property value, or adding someone to a list. Other options in a workflow include setting a goal, which will unenroll a user from the workflow if they meet the goal, and testing the workflow yourself to make sure everything is behaving as intended. Under settings, you have the option to set execution times and unenroll or suppress specific people from this workflow or other workflows if they meet the criteria you have set. Next is the performance tab, where you can see how a workflow is performing. And finally, the history tab, which will give you a detailed history of the actions of every contact who goes through your workflow. Now that we have a basic understanding of the tool, let's take a look at a couple of examples. First, let's say you wanted to send a follow-up email after someone downloads an ebook. This will require an enrollment criteria of a form submission and an action of sending an email. To do this, select form submission for your enrollment criteria, and then find the form you want. Next, you want to determine whether or not you want to allow re-enrollment for your workflow. Your decision here of whether or not to allow for re-enrollment is going to entirely depend on whether or not you want your users to be able to get the thank you email multiple times for multiple form submissions. In my opinion, since the thank you email is tied directly to a user interaction and the email serves as a confirmation of sorts, I would allow for re-enrollment in this case, but it's entirely up to your unique situation and your preferences. Next, you want to add a new action and select Send Email. Then find the email you want and click Save. The only thing left to do now is to review your workflow and determine whether or not you want to enroll contacts who already meet the criteria or only enroll contacts who might meet the criteria in the future. Select your preferred option, click Turn On, and you're done. Now let's try a more complicated workflow. Let's say you wanted to send three reminder emails leading up to a specific event. This will once again require a form submission as the enrollment criteria, a series of email sends and delays, and a special kind of workflow that's centered around the event date. To get started on this example, click Create Workflow, and instead of clicking Start from Scratch, we're going to click Center on a Date. Then select the date of your event. Next, Select the enrollment criteria, form submission, and then find your event form. For re-enrollment, in this case, I would not allow it since your event only comes around once. 
Next, select the first date and time leading up to the event that you would like to remind your users. Then add an action to send an email and select the first reminder. Then set another delay for the next date and time you would like to remind your users. And send the next reminder email. This can continue for as many reminders as you see fit. When finished, simply click review again, select no or yes for existing contacts who already meet the criteria, and turn it on. And that'll do it for this tutorial here at DD Academy. Please leave any questions you have in the comments down below and check the description as always for additional resources. See you next time.